Hi there and welcome to Auto Retro, the podcast where we talk to people about the cars of their lives. Guests, David. Oh, well, we talk to guests about guests. the cars of their lives. Yeah, sounds like we're at a Toyota dealer now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they call them guests. Uh, I'm David. I'm Ed. This is it. And tonight we have a very special guest. He's a good friend of both David and mine. A very good friend. Uh, and to reel off some of his accolades, he's been a Saab Master Technician. He's been an ex-Formula V race car driver. He's Impressive. He's been a mechanic for the Porsche Carrera Cup and worked for Rolls-Royce and Bentley Restoration Emporium, the Derby Works. Welcome, Rowan Cornelius. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, David. Nice to be here. Isn't it? On it's, a Monday. Uh, it's on a, a thrill Monday. for us to have you here. We've wanted to have you here for quite some time we now. We have. Because we probably wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for you, because we no. actually met through you. I, uh... It's all your fault. <laughs> it's all your fault, Rowan. <laughs> I take no credit for no. it. <laughs> no, true. it was a very fortuitous meeting. Thank I you think you would have met at some point anyway, we, David. You know, that's my well of cross. Maybe, but yeah, maybe that's not. my well of cross. I kept hearing this name from Ron. Oh, David Prince would love that. You and David <laughs> Prince would get along. David Prince, and I, just, I knew this name before I ever set eyes on you. Wow. And um, yeah, we're lucky that happened. Beautiful. My lack of, um, my, my, I was going to say my legend preceded me, but that's. You didn't have a legend. <laughs> I didn't have a legend then. at the time. <laughs> That's it. Well, let's uh, let's focus let's on Rowan. Delve in, let's delve, delve into Rowan's past. You know the drill, Rowan. You know the Deep drill. Deep dive in. You've watched every oh, episode. I have. And uh, yeah. Rowan, what was your first car memory? First car memory was uh, yeah, obviously my parents' car. Yep. I remember growing up, we had a uh, a gold Kingswood. Oh yeah, uh, what, HQ what, Kingswood. HQ, HQ. HQ. so no, early, early one seventies. Yep. Yep. Um, Yes, that's what I remember when I was little. And I always remember our neighbour had one that had like a nice brocade cloth trim. Oh, yes, the optional, only... optional cloth inserts. Yeah, yes. I had vinyl. So I always felt ah. a little bit left down in the, in the Kingswood. <laughs> but probably the first car... Very I, sticky I had, in summer. Yeah, mm. I had any connection with was uh, they replaced that with a Chrysler Sigma 1978 Ooh. model. And that Which would have seemed very modern compared to the HQ. Yeah, and it was a very flash looking Sigma. It was a, uh, it was actually, I think it was a 1977 one. It was a yeah, Japanese very early. built one. Okay, yep. very um, early car. In burgundy with a silver vinyl roof. Ooh, had wow. silver stripes down the bottom with 2000 GL and across the back, which I think was a bit of a sports pack. It and, was, uh, yes, yes. Yeah, the multi-spoke alloys. and. Yep. Yeah, very flash car, full of burgundy inside. Burgundy. Wow, that, that, that was burgundy the lure, wasn't it? It was a real... I was like a corded... I was only okay. young. Yeah. It was like a corded sort of cloth, so... Okay. Chrysler um, it. it's a sensation. The ad for those at the time, yeah. it was driving through a sheet of glass. Through the glass. Oh, yeah, I've seen through that. The glass and, the glass and the glass is all shattering and the, and the Sigma's powering through. Story goes they actually wrote off a lot of Sigmas <laughs> trying <laughs> yeah. to get the angle of the glass right. Oh, so really? it shattered Yes, right. yeah. How would you be dri- do, driving it through that? Oh, yeah, see if this one works. Well, <laughs> yeah, I, would, I, would, I would have thought right. that driving a car through a painted glass would write it off. You do a bit of damage. I, I it did was read all about, about this. Yeah. It was, and they had a little detonation to shatter the glass oh, okay. oh, the moment first. the car went through. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. That was probably wisdom born of pain, I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they destroyed a few on the way. So. Okay, but um, that was a pretty significant car. Well, I remember growing up in that, and that was probably uh, yeah when I first took an interest in cars. And, uh, um, yeah, it had... I remember as it got older, and it probably wasn't very old relatively today, but you used to bang on the vinyl roof and you could hear the rust falling oh, down oh, the pillars. Crunching. And, oh, dear. Um, yeah, that car ended up yeah, hitting a kangaroo, and then it oh. got rear-ended in Dandenong somewhere. And okay. uh, I remember seeing it sitting on top of the pile at the car wrecker in Terrell oh, wow. after we got rid of it. Oh, so dear. Okay. That was Bye-bye, a sad Sigma. end. That was the circle of life for the Sigma, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it didn't last very long. So uh, <laughs> that was probably my earliest memory of uh, of cars and probably getting attached to a, okay. to a car. Okay. So. Yeah. Toy was, cars uh, somewhere along the way too? Always had, yeah, always Ports. had all your Matchbox Ports. cars. Yep. yep, for sure. Still got them? Uh, no. Oh, they, okay. They went missing somewhere along the way. Right. Unfortunate. So, yeah, Never too late. late. That's what Facebook Marketplace was. Yeah, for yeah. Re- if you remember them, you can <laughs> you can rebuild that collection. <laughs> Quite That's a lot of we... them ended up in the vice to get damaged. Oh, so you, okay. You wow. The back you were one of those kids. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Look, this one's had a crash. So. <laughs> Do you remember those ones? That, I think they were Hot Wheels where they had the flip panels. So you could drive them, crash it into another one, and then the panel would flip and it and would be damaged. damaged. Yep. Yep. Do you remember those? And then you'd flip them back and go, oh, brand new again. And there was a set you could get called Smash Up Derby. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. from that sort of and thing. And yeah, you'd sm- they had a little trigger and it used to yeah. 
I never had the vice. I never had I just had the vice. I was a cut. Everyone was a country Quite effective kid. still, yeah, you know, in creating that, that. Once damaged, always damaged. That's it. So that was, uh, yeah, that was sort of my parents' car. They got replaced by another Sigma, a okay. bright blue. They're onto a good one. thing. So, um, yeah, and while that was around, I probably started to get an interest myself. I see I grew up sort of on a farm. So I think I might have been 15 when I bought my uh, my personally first car. Yeah, which was, what uh, was that? It was a 1949 Renault 750. Cool. Wow. That's an old car for such a young kid. A very old car. So I. Uh, so they were the, they were the 4 CV? Yeah, 4 CV. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. So it looked a bit like a Beetle? A little bit like a Ford yeah, or yeah. Beetle. Ford or Big mud guards, quite yep. roundy. Yep, really nice back on it. Yeah. Um, yeah rear no. engine. Rear engine, yep. yeah. Mine was an early one, so it was 760 cc's. Ooh. I never <laughs> drove it <laughs> oh, for okay. those years. So. Um, yeah, that just sort of was a was a car we played with Did, in the garage yeah. and tinkered around with, um, but it never ran and I never drove it. So shame. Yeah, shame. shame. Nice but that shame. Was, yeah, interesting. Cool car though. Yeah, very cool. And for a fifteen year old, that's not common to, to no. desire that. No. Well, I guess growing up, all my reading was uh, you know probably the the British magazines with sports and classic yeah. cars yeah. and and those ones. Um, but there was an Australian version that was a, a classic. Cars Australia, and yes. I remember reading an article in that about the Renault. Okay, going, um, oh, that's like a bit that. of me. And that I always wanted a Fiat 500, but they were a little bit too expensive for yeah. uh, for a young guy. Yeah. So this came up, and uh, still yeah. are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they've gone yeah. crazy. They're still out of so. still out of reach, even <laughs> yeah. for an old guy. Still yeah. out of reach. <laughs> so yeah, so that was the Renault. So um, and what came what came next in the string? What did you actually drive around in on the farm or anything like that? Well, I guess growing up, we had uh, yeah. First car I drove in was a Morris 1100. Ooh, I like those. <laughs> we, I do. I've got a, Our family seemed to have a bit of a thing about Morris 1100s. My sister had one as her first car. My ha- okay. my mum had one. Yep. Um, well, I was saying at dinner, they're, they're, they're sort of the Mazda 3 of the 60s. Yeah, you know, like absolutely. They were, they were common. Yeah, they weren't yeah. mega expensive. Yep. Yep. They were relatively robust and yep. kind of there were a lot of them around. And they floated on fluid. They did. They, did. they floated on fluid. Did yours have the sticker, floats on fluid? On I the, don't on the remember it having the sticker. It was a dark blue one. And uh, we got it from one of our neighbours yes. down in uh, where I grew up. Um, and they gave it to us. I think they'd had an issue with their cat getting caught in the fan. <laughs> what do you mean getting caught in the fan? <laughs> when we got it, there was the remains We're of, not a, of about a cat the... under oh, the bonnet. Oh, my God. It was oh. under the... <laughs> so okay. what? When it was started. So they've got quite oh. a big fan shroud, and I think the cat might have been in near oh, it. Shit. And the cats got okay. caught in the fan. So Not ideal. So they couldn't handle this, and they said, here, have, have the Morris the 1100. <laughs> Can you imagine Mrs. Slocum? <laughs> I can't find my <laughs> pussy. <laughs> And the 1100 has been dreadfully hard to start this week. <laughs> I love it. So what did you oh, do? Did you hose it all out? Yeah, I cleaned it all out. And uh, it still oh. had, a, had an overheating issue, but I could sort of do one lap of the paddock. It was probably, and that, right. full of, it was probably full of cat <laughs> fur or broken the belt or something. Oh, oh no. dear. So, uh, so that was the first car I probably learned to drive in. Okay. Was, yeah, I, I could it. do one okay. lap of the paddock and then Steve <laughs> would come out. You'd have to park let it, it again and park it. And, <laughs> and oh that dear. that was the good. That was the S. Wow. Yeah, that was an S. That was a twelve seventy five manual. Yeah, yeah. In, uh, in a really dark blue, it was a pretty flash. That's a nice car. car. Um, I don't think we've had an uh, animal inspired first car story before <laughs> on Auto so. Retro. No, I, don't I think, think that's fairly so. unique. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> Oh, That's dear. quite something. Mm, so okay. um, yeah, so that was. I mean, we didn't really have have paddock bombs, I guess, or that, that probably was, but we didn't. You know, we didn't wreck them or anything. It was mm. it was nice. So that car ended up getting painted and everything put in the shed. But um, I guess after that, my dad had a an XP Falcon Ute. Which I used yeah, to do yeah. lots of round laps of the tail paddock. lights. Yep. Yeah, round tail yeah, lights. Yeah, three on the tree. One seventy pursuit or something. Yeah, yeah super pursuit. Right. Yes, yep. little yep. badge on the front. I remember yep. that with yeah column shift. So that's probably what I really learned to drive in around the paddock. Yeah, used to nice. my dog would jump in the back and we'd we'd go driving and <laughs> nice. if it was wet you could yeah, get the <laughs> back out, out very easily. In the I like. Oh, okay. okay. So yeah, so that was that was a big part of, of growing up, and uh, yeah, what we used to drive around in, and then that was so out place. of necessity. I mean, kids that have grown up on farms out of necessity, haven't they? And helping around mm. the farm, you've yeah, learned to drive. Drive, yep. yeah, yeah, yep. that's right, that's right. Great grounding, though. Great, yeah, you know, way to to 
hone your skills and actually be able to drive before you let loose on the road. Yeah, and reversing trailers and, and yep. things. My dad used to make me reverse the boat into the shed constantly until I got it right when mm. I was sort of 14 or 15. So wow. You're very um, good now at reversing trailers. <laughs> yeah. I've seen it. I've seen it. Well, so, seen it so that was good. And then after that, this people will probably have a fit when they hear this, but um, we had a, a Lotus Escort twin cam, which oh, my dad bought. okay, so, that ups the ante a little bit, doesn't yeah. it? Uh, so very collectible now. Drive that around the paddock, which oh! people will have a fit now, given what they're worth. But yeah. at the time, it was, wow. you know, I think it was three or four grand we paid for it. It wasn't an expensive car, and... Uh, yeah, learned to drive quite quickly around the paddock in that. Yes, so, yes. That's um, called rally driving. Yeah, yeah, yes. yep. Very So popular. they had the they had the Lotus engine. It did. Yeah, Lotus sixteen hundred. Yep. yep. Twin yep. cam. So. Wow. Um, I yeah. had a teacher at school that had one of those. That was a very quick. It was sporty little car. Yeah, it felt fantastic. And this was the the sort of gold, musty gold color yeah. and nice black grill That's and headlights. Cool. It was a great thing. So, so is there a chance that car still exists or? Did I that got end, sold. End I up at Trelgan. Yeah, Trelgan. As well. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> mm, Hopefully um, not. I can't remember who bought that, but yeah, that okay. got sold. If, if I think sold? it got sold for five or six thousand dollars. So oh, probably okay. thought we were onto a good thing back in the day. Mm, and yes, doubled yes. our money, but. Um, yeah, okay. obviously now it's worth a lot more. Yeah. It's like and what, everything. What came next? Because you haven't driven any of these on the road yet. This is all pre-driving on the road. Yeah, this is all, all sort of around the paddock. So um, probably 12 months before my 18th, we started looking yeah, for a What's car. What's Rowan going to get? Well, we decided I wanted an MG of some sort. Mm -hmm. and I really want an MG Morris midget. Garage. Yeah, so mm -hmm. uh, my mum had had an MGB and dad had an MGA, which we've, mm -hmm. we've still got. <laughs> um, so yeah, we thought we'd get an MG midget and I ended up buying on my mega budget a uh, left-hand drive rubber nose <laughs> midget in the beautiful 70s colour of russet brown. Ooh, wow. And the idea with that was just to do a quick left-to-right conversion and, and yep. start using it. So... Um, yeah, we sort of started pulling some little bits off with my dad. We liked to, to play around. And uh, I remember coming home from school one day and there was a totally stripped shell on its side on some tyres out oh, the front God. of the garage. He'd pull right. everything, everything off it, everything off it. In the and did that, did that sort of scare you or did that please you at the time? Uh, it was never the plan. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Dad! <laughs> There'll be a bit of it. You'll see a bit of a theme coming up here. Things oh, okay. didn't really get finished in our house very often. Right. Um, and it's probably continued with me today. Well, you've still bit. got that, that midget. I still have that midget. Oh, the still... midget as and well is, as the MGA. It is yeah, right-hand okay. drive. It is. It's, all, it's, it's, that it's painted. Place. It's, it's painted, very close. It's done, carpeted, trimmed. So I that would have been an American it. spec car. It was. It was a Californian car. There was quite a thing bringing them in, wasn't mm. there? It was. Well, the, then. the guy we bought it from uh, bought container loads of MGBs wow. in, yeah. and this just sort of slipped in, and he didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. So. so when you say rubber nose, they, they had like a... Um, it was for the US safety standards, was. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and it totally destroyed the it did. styling yeah, of the everything. car. And they yeah. jacked them up to get the bumpers to the right yes, height. Yes, so they sat yeah. really high, big bumpers. Oh. And by that stage, it had a Triumph 1500 engine in it, not yeah. the A-series. So It's like a Spitfire motor, Yeah, wasn't Spitfire it? Yeah. motor. So probably not the most desirable midget around. But, uh, okay. But it was <laughs> your midget. It was my midget, <laughs> which I've never driven. So... Oh. I, I still would have taken it as an 18 year old. I oh, I thought it was going to be fantastic. It took me so. till I was 20 to get a midget. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you drove yours, which is pretty fun. Quite, quite a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so, so when I got my license, um, yeah. still, still no car. So midget well, still no car. Yeah. So I, I sort of inherited. You had a Renault, had a midget, but yep, still no in the actual shed. car that you. We had use. a Formula V race car. We'd done shed. some hill climbs and things in. Mm. Um, but yeah, so I sort of inherited the MGB that that mum and dad had so okay. which was I remember that's how I met you early on in the MG club it was primrose yellow it pretty was, standard yeah. looking calypso bit. primrose yeah. chrome wires it was it was yeah it was it a wasn't nice a great car. car it was all right so yeah I probably had that for geez with hindsight probably drove that around for 12 months maybe mm, okay um and then yeah tipped myself into a mini so Ooh, as ah. you do yeah what sort of mini it was a clubman so it was a gt record yeah, clubman okay. yeah square front but had gt badges little yep. contessa alloys nice. lovely painted a uh yeah really bright sort of tealy green metallic color nice. so it wasn't an original no color. not at all yeah no, no. It, it was really a horrible car but um <laughs> I guess yeah, had the had the fun. We went and did some track days at Phillip Island and, yeah. and Sandown and things in it. It was horrendously slow, but um, 
Yeah, fun though. Fun. Yeah, great, it, fun. it was a, a very great chuckle car. And, uh, what motor did that have? In it was an 1100. Okay, so okay, yeah. not quite a 1275, but... No, it was really better. worn out. So I remember going down the front straight at Phillip Island. You yeah. could get... It was sort of pushing 140. But as you went around into Honda, because we had a headwind, it would get to about 120. That was the top speed. So (laughs) Uh, that's it. um, Yeah, so that was really funny. Good story coming home from Phillip Island that day when we did the track day was that the fuel gauge never worked in it. So it ran out of fuel on on the southeastern and and, uh, a mate of mine had his big plumbing high ace van with his MG on the trailer. Mm. So... We just put a rope from the trailer to the mini and went down oh, like so a you double were, to the so you were plumbing uh, van trailer trailer yeah. mini. It's quite a long load of yeah. very small cars. Uh, 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 uh. That's called a road train. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 road train. People's books. So um, yeah. Now you touched on it before in the introduction, and also you touched on it that it was also in the garage. But tell us a bit about the Formula V. Where did that? Where did they come in? Was your dad into Formula V? Yeah, well, my, my dad had always sort of been into cars and things. So. Um, yeah, grew up in Gippsland, so I was a member of the Gippsland Car Club oh, yeah. from from fairly early on. So we bought an old Formula V, which we rebuilt and did some hill climbs. Which, in that. Uh, which for people listening who don't know what a Formula V is, oh, a Volkswagen a, powered yeah, open wheel race open car. Wheel race car. It looks yeah. like a proper yeah. old school race car. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh no, it's on a VW chassis, isn't it? And with, yeah, v, uh, Volkswagen H beam front end, yep. and a twelve hundred engine with yep. gearbox and uh, brilliant grassroots motorsport. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it was it was really fun. So I got to do that when I was young in in a phantom it was called it was yep. a car built in melbourne so so got to um yeah have a little bit of a play in that and then yeah a little bit later on bought a better car and did the state race series and yeah. things for, for a couple cool. of years so um yeah that was really good and easy to get parts for being all volkswagon yeah was, low was, stressed all yep. the cars yep. were, were reasonably close in in speed and yes and specifications did so. you ever win no no, um, I won Rookie of the Year, which is pretty oh, exciting. That's good. Oh, that's um, great. Yeah, best I did. I, I got a uh, second on the grid at Winton, but then the oil pump uh, died um, during qualifying, right. and I think I had three dollars left in my bank account. And oh, I still no. had to get home. So, <laughs> <laughs> despite everyone's oh, okay. um, offers of help, yeah. I uh, yeah put my tail between my legs and packed up and went <laughs> home. So, bye bye. Um, yeah, lots of fun. Um, Till then, it was these, fun. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's still going. Still a great category. It's probably crept up a little bit in price from from when we were doing it. Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully they don't have DSGs things. in them now. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but they're sixteen hundred. Oh wow! Okay. Um, disc brakes. Yeah, a lot of changes. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah, but that was fun. So, I guess that led on. You know, I had the mini, but then got into Formula V, so I needed something to uh, to tow the. Formula, Formula V around, v. so uh, you know everyone else we were racing with went and bought XE Falcons <coughs> and XF Falcons and things, but uh, I tipped myself into a 1984 Nimbus. So <laughs> Melissa would be proud. Melissa She'd be would really be proud. Proud. another be guest very of ours. Proud. Yeah. Yeah. Very proud. Um, so I love a Mitsubishi that because, Nimbus. Yep, to yep. tow to tow the race car around, which. Uh, with hindsight, probably, <laughs> probably was an probably idea. Probably not the first. T- <laughs> no, it's not the first thing that time. comes to mind, no, is it? It's not. But it's not. It's it like, was fantastic. It's, it's, it had so much room. Yeah. You um, can pile up full of stuff. Yeah, reasonably yeah. economical. You could get it, if you kept it over 100 in fifth, it would sort of stay there to okay. a little yeah. light trailer. And Because uh, the Formula V in a trailer is not that heavy. Oh, it doesn't weigh anything. You yeah. Know, it was probably probably 700 kilos. Yeah, it's not there. So, um, but it wasn't a standard Nimbus, was it? Well, it was at that, at that oh, point. It was at that so, stage, okay. Um, yeah, interesting story. Not long after I got it, I was driving, driving home or back to, to Gippsland in it, and I was in fifth gear on the freeway, and... Uh, Went back to fourth and there was nothing there. Went back to third, oh, there's nothing there. So I went back to fifth, it still had fifth gear. So right. <laughs> sort of, it was towing the car at the time. So I made it to somewhere near Druin and, and pulled off the exit ramp and stopped somewhere safe. And uh, the RACV guy came out and luckily he was he was pretty switched because. on with these cars. <laughs> and uh, the interesting thing with those gearboxes, I know whether the early Mitsubishis had the, the super shift. They yeah, had yeah. The, the power Colt. and economy. Yeah, the Colts right. and yeah. the Cordias and all those things. Had they a, were like an eight-speed. They had a four-speed with a two-speed With a, with a two-speed diff. overdrive mm. or yeah. something. Going so on. when they made the five-speed for the Nimbus and the later model Colts and everything, they just put a vacuum-controlled actuator to shift it from oh, wow. okay. power to economy. Yeah. So, yeah. so your first four gears were your power speed, yeah. and then fifth just changed the diff into the high ratio okay. economy okay. Um, and they had a habit of, of something happening in that two speed diff so this RACV guy just swapped the vacuum lines over on the canister and suddenly we were locked in um, economy mode so yeah. I had four speed but high ratio so okay. I drove okay. for ages then like that just, just as a, <laughs> yeah high force yeah 
high range. Wow, okay. What an adaptable vehicle. So, yeah, it was fantastic. That's cool. Not so, only can you take six of your closest friends yeah. with you. <laughs> yeah. You can yeah, yeah. tow race cars and <laughs> load it full of stuff. So it did a lot of things, that car. we uh, So it went through that era. It probably did quite a few gearboxes in that time. Um, and then I think it, it went off the road for a few years and then came back on the road because we had a bit of a, a trip coming up. So it would have been mid-20s by this stage, mm. mid to late 20s. And, As uh, in you're in your mid to late 20s. At yeah, yeah. Yep. And mate and I decided we'd go to, to Cape York. So on, in on, the Nimbus, on, well, on motorbikes. So right. uh, we need somehow <laughs> to get our motorbikes to the start line. We had XR two hundred and fifty, so we right. took the seats out of the Nimbus and put another. I, like, I remember this. Yeah, put another this. gearbox in, and we took the front wheels off the motorbikes and slipped them both in the back. And they were. It was quite a sight <laughs> seeing them <laughs> packed into the back of the Nimbus with the wheels off and all the luggage packed around it, sort of thing. And, yep. Wow. And drove to Townsville. So and, we, and I remember you taking the time. It, they fit with like. It you was know, millimeters. Like millimeters. To spare. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wow. remember going past Ringwood Honda where we'd bought our motorbikes, and uh, the salesman there came out and said, Oh, yeah, you're ready to go. Where are your bikes? We said, There <laughs> they are. They're in there. He's, Where? <laughs> They're in the back. So, um, yeah, so Mode and I drove that to Townsville, fully loaded up, and left it there for a couple of months while we, we rode up to the top. Brilliant. And came back and Such drove a good it home. Adventure. So, that's, that's amazing. Um, yeah, a couple of weeks after we got home, I was driving through Q and the gearbox broke again. So um, right. it got pushed to the side, but okay. it, it did the big trip. So, Well, right. lucky it didn't break at Udna Dabba yeah, or Dabba something. Yeah, Dubbo on the no, way. Yeah, yeah, somewhere, right. yeah. But it's still in the collection. It's still and there. And at some point it had a bit of a heart transplant. Well, yeah, as it was sitting there with a the broken gearbox, um, I think it came up to, to Easter. We had four days. So... Um, I went and bought a, a Cordia at the time, Cordia Turbo. And and, back uh, then, when you could just when you buy could a Cordia, Cordia Turbo. it was yep. cheap. It was around the corner and proceeded to yeah, swap transplant fuel-injected turbo engine into the Nimbus. And hmm. we got it sort of done over, over an Easter weekend and uh, out it drove. So. That makes a weapon, doesn't it? <laughs> a somewhat of a weapon compared to a normal <laughs> Nimbus, yeah. So, uh, and it's still got that motor in it. Still there, yeah. I haven't myself to sell it so it's um it's sitting at my mum's house it's a little bit of tlc uh, but yeah, it, she's it's pretty tired it's there mm. yeah, yeah. So, as you say it's done a lot of work that car yeah, yeah it's it's gravel roads and i remember you saying you would often come back over the over yeah, was the it the dargo road, or, dargo road yeah. or something yeah so um yeah did, did plenty of work um but yeah fantastic car i think yeah. that's the thing with with cars it's probably not so much the the car that you remember it's, it's all the, the adventures mm, yeah, and, that's right that's right uh, and the yeah. lady when you bought it I remember everyone saying you bought it from car seat from melbourne's Mac, cheapest from cars, melbourne's cheapest melbourne's cheapest cars. maxine yep. in yep. melbourne's cheapest cars <laughs> and she sent him a christmas card for years afterwards she must have liked it but after he'd signed the papers to buy it she um she commented didn't she yeah something? she just looked at me I was, I was obviously a pretty young guy she just said why do you want this car <laughs> maxine yeah, uh, yeah, very yeah. bottled blonde hair and acid wash and that's pretty rough so what do you want this for Maxine yeah. is great. So, yeah. But that's where Rowan's always been a bit, you know, if everyone's going that way, Rowan will go that way. But it makes sense. <laughs> it's called marching you know? to your own drive. Exactly. Well, it outlasted everyone's XE Fords. Yeah, there, there you go. go. Yeah. There you broken. go. But they're not still in their garage. No, exactly right. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So that was good. So, so during that period, too, I, I had a uh, Alpha GTV I bought. So I'd started working at Dixon that. as a. Mm-hmm. As an apprentice, um, and that was traded in, I think, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yes, yeah. so it was an eighty-five GTV oh, two so liter a plastic bumper, late, yeah, later mm, model. Late yeah. one, had sunroof, a sunroof, lucky windows, yeah. long gear, aircon, never worked. Yeah. Um, so yeah, had that even new that was standard. Aircon, I think <laughs> yeah, I think a lot it. of them were yeah. like yeah. below yeah. that from new. <laughs> but it'd been one owner. It was a beautiful car. I had that for a long time, and uh, uh, yeah, it was ultra reliable. It was a great car. So I um, oh, sorry, ultra reliable. It was wow, the, the only great. thing. It, later in life, the indicators gave issues, and mm. they had a printed circuit board and the tail lights, which I sort of had right. to repair a few little things. But mind you, this man was working as an Alpha mechanic yeah. at the time. <laughs> That's right. So That's if you right. if ever your outfit is going to be. <laughs> reliable it'll be when you've got a mechanic working on them yep i started doing what i do um around that time 85 86 i think it was and henley's in camwell was one of my customers and they were selling them new yeah and i remember in pd you'd find oh you'd find all all sorts of things wrong with them but one day (laughs) there was a whole lot of handbills like printed printed up handbills down in the um behind the radiator support panel of one and it was 
all in Italian, but it was a stop work meeting. Oh, really? So they'd obviously <laughs> been handed all these along the production line. What, Someone and had and just, just jammed them in. The, 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 the car got all the way to Australia to pre delivery <laughs> out in Camberwell. And the, the stop, oh, there's a stop working meeting, you know, three weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> three months ago, probably. Only right. the Italian car. Yeah, 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 that's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what came after the Alpha? Again, that stayed around for a long time. It did. Yeah, Ron's not one to sell time. a car. I don't sell very quickly, much, or it no. takes me a long time to, to mm. selling it, which, uh, yeah, my wife Michelle thinks she's pretty safe that I don't move on from things very quick. <laughs> no, so. So, she's, oh, so she's a keeper. <laughs> she's a keeper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, geez, I, I can't even remember there. We had the Alpha and then, uh, yeah, the Nimbus. I think, did we. What came next? There was. Oh. There were other alphas, I remember. Yeah, we had a one five. We had a couple of there one couple five, of one sixes, five sixes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a blue one, bluey silver, yeah, and, a, and a red JTS, one. which is good. And the the red one I bought with the blown motor and put a new engine in it. Yeah, that was so the pretty rough. JTS that was the was that the family it's a twin two engine? spark or something? No, it was no. A, yeah earlier was the alpha engine. Oh, okay, um, still the alpha. Yeah, yeah, still the earlier one. So, just the update of the the initial one five six. Mm. So, um, and how were they for reliability? Yeah, yeah, really good. They. It had a few issues in the end. On hot days, the windows wouldn't go down and <laughs> and the ice warning would come up on the dash, which then disabled the air conditioning. So <laughs> it got pretty hot on a hot day <laughs> and the boot wouldn't open. Right. So, you know, normal. Yeah, just fine. But right. otherwise, it was pretty good. But it, like all those cars, it got to the point where it needed it needed cam belt tensioners. Yep. All the bottom arms, all the bushes were shot, and you, you added it up, and it was six thousand dollars worth yeah, of work. It's, it's, it's yeah. an economical I sold right. the car for three. Yeah, that's right. Um, and someone bought it, fixed it all, and, and had a great car. It still looked perfect. Yeah, but, mm-hmm. just but for you to do that, it's just doing. too. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you probably had the manual, so you didn't yeah. have a seller speed no. right at any stage, no? No, I had the had the misfortune of working in an alpha dealer when seller speeds <laughs> were around as okay. a service uh, service advisor, and uh, ouch, yeah. They weren't good. And there wasn't a whole lot of support, I guess. Very, um, mm. uh, didn't like the hot weather either, did they? No, nah, just that the, the quite actuators and the pumps. Yeah. So it was just always something. And yep. uh, at yep. least where I worked, there didn't seem to be a whole lot of knowledge to repair them. Right. So. Okay. <laughs> and we're chatting about this before. That, that dealership where you were in the Alpha Service Advising also did Honda. Yep. And, you know, there's such a contrast. <laughs> you know, we were saying between the Alpha client coming in at, 40,000k or 60,000k and the Honda client coming in at 40,000k. Yeah, yeah, we'd, we'd be handing over eight yeah. and nine thousand dollar bills and giving them a list of work to do and over at Honda right. they're all smiling and handing you over go. 300 dollar bills and yeah, yeah, jazz is perfect. Just see you next year. All so, you need to do is move desks. Just yeah, that's right. Just move that's down right. and yeah. yeah. No stress. Would have been much easier. One of my so. ex-colleagues uh, I, when I was at BMW he was in the service department and um, there was always something that needed to be done over and above the normal schedule and uh, he went to Toyota after that. And I spoke to him a month later and he said, I can't, I can't believe it. Like, <laughs> they're so happy, like, same thing. And and I asked clients, you know, is there anything else you'd like us to look at? And they're like, what do you mean? Yeah. You know, they, they didn't yeah, get it. They, they yeah, weren't they educated in mean a... normally well, it was, there's problems. It was interesting at Lance Dixon, I think, because I ended up, yeah, obviously staying in, in Saab. When I went there, we had uh, yeah, all sorts. We had Alpha and MG and Ferrari all, all in the same workshop. Good, good variety. Mm. Yeah, but then Alpha moved to another workshop and Land Rover were down the end. And a Monday morning, there'd be 15 trucks lined up with Alphas and Land Rovers yeah. and you know, maybe one Saab. So yeah, wow. We, you know, you the, got off lightly. Yeah, we yeah. had the good cars, which is, <laughs> is pretty strange which is, when yeah. Saab's the good one. Yeah. Uh, um, so you were, you, were, you were with Saab through the... Uh, no, yeah. late 90s, yeah, early late so 90s. the GM, GM it, time. Not really. I, I sort of got out when oh, it was the the new generation 900s, right. so the 900 hatch, which yep. sort of evolved into the 93. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah, last of the 9000s, okay. and then the 95s. Some of those were nice cars. Yeah, Ooh, 9, the 9000 was a lovely was a thing. Fantastic car. My um, car. my sister's father-in-law has just sold a 9000 Aero that he bought new you know yeah. it was black wow. and he always looked after it and it was a genuine hero and he's just well, i didn't know he was selling it. i only found yeah. out the other day but he got, got quite good money for it mm. you know and my sister was saying is that a lot ed and i said i said yeah, it actually is but it's kind of now in the last three four years those have mm. become coming to their own and to find a one owner you know 90s or 80s, late 80s aero is quite yeah. rare yeah and and a lot of the uh, you know i guess saab weren't a big company but a lot of their engine management especially in in because they got in early on the turbo fad i guess you want to call it that they were there at the start so a lot of their engine management was way ahead of what everyone else was doing they're actually a really clever 
mm. clever company and, mm. and did some fantastic things. So. Back, back when, yeah, back when it was not GM, they they, yeah. they they always, I mean, they didn't do everything perfectly, but some things they did really mm. well, better yep. than anyone else. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So I guess when the, what, what we called the sports sedan 9.3, so that was the 2000 and four-ish type of model yeah. came out yeah that was really heavily gm influenced compared to the other ones the yes. other ones had a little bit but yeah i don't think there was much you could swap between a vector and a 9.5 in the day yes um, yeah but the later ones got quite certainly GM were. there were more bits yeah and the 9000 was an interesting car too because that was a model shared car too wasn't yeah. it? that yep. was the fiat chroma yep and the lancia uh, Thema, yeah, I think I think, think it was, it was the Thema, and the yeah, one six four um, Alpha. Yes, yep. yes. So the the, the, platform. the the platform was the same on, on on all of them, but I think Saab did it best. Well, they yeah. certainly sold best out they here of all best. those cars. Yeah. Mm. Yep. But um, yeah. and now one of those brands, a bit like Porsche or Volvo, or whatever, that was just very loyal. You know, mm. you'd have it. Yeah, we had you'd customers have very who just loyal walk in and, and buy another one, yeah. and, and that's what they really lost, I think, at the end. And. Uh, uh, even look at their, their warranty support and how they looked after people. They were they were fantastic mm. in the era I was there. There was yeah, they just looked after people. The cars mm. were were what they were, but they were what people wanted. Mm, and yeah. uh, I remember with the launch of the new one, it was all about chasing BMW, and we've got a sports yeah. sedan. And, and Saab owners didn't want a sports car. No, they, no, they wanted right. it comfy. Yeah, they wanted comfy. Well, and they did. They were beautiful on the. We, we ended up my. Uh, now wife moved to Swan Hill, so we, we bought her a 9,000 sedan just to do that. Oh, okay. That was yeah, a, a plain Jane CD. CD and it sedan was in a beige. beige. Was it yep. citron <laughs> beige, that yep, colour? certainly was. <laughs> yep, <laughs> citron beige. I think and David the, did the seats on that one oh, back in the day. Okay, back did, in you, the day? did you do okay. a bit of vinyl they leather colouring? A little bit of, yes, yep. love. I remember that car, and it was very, so comfortable. Yeah, seats, it was and, a non-turbo. And safe as hell. Slow, like, yeah, yeah, beautifully built. Yeah. Yeah, 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 really good things. So. What better to put you they in to go to still had the, did they, no, the, um, no, the, up on, up on the dash. Yeah. Yeah. The no, 900 the had the key down there. Yeah, it was, it was crashing, wasn't it? No, it was, um, in case a driver had a heart attack, the passenger could turn oh, the wow. engine. Yeah, or became incapacitated. Yeah, yeah became incapacitated. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that was, I've got a great book at home, and it was like a, they did great brochures back in the days, like 30, 40 pages. And it was, oh, I can't remember what it actually says on it. Something along the lines of perfectly conceived and, and beautifully built or something <laughs> yeah. like that. And it went into all this stuff about it, that you would never imagine, you yeah. know, all the detail about mm. the engineering behind it. Wow. They're pretty impressive. Shame they're not worth the much now unless it's an aero. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, a funny story of that I eventually yeah, did my Master Tech qualification with Saab and um, the year I did it was the first year I guess GM in Australia or Holden took control of them so every other year all the master techs have been flown to Sweden <laughs> and gone through everything we got taken to Adelaide budget <laughs> cuts <laughs> budget cuts yeah budget cuts so we went to Adelaide, Adelaide. for two days wow so, Elizabeth too I'm yes, guessing yeah got a yeah. tour through the factory <laughs> and, wow uh, when going wow. karting and that was about it so it was, yeah. wasn't quite going Not driving quite in the going snow racing sleep. in Sweden and avoiding and moose and what have you yeah. Yeah. so I missed out Damn. there I was a little bit Ripped late off. so yeah. Now, now oh, I'm really interested to know too. How did the Derby works? Derby, yep. Derby works. Derby works. Derby yep. works. Well, that was. Yeah. I would say the, Derby, but it the just depends where you grew up. From. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, the Derby works. I worked for for uh, nearly 13 years. Or that. So it's not um, that long. It was that long. Wow. So I'd been working in service advising and. Yep. Um, yeah, I guess customer customers drive you a little bit nuts sometimes. <laughs> so looking for something else and, and a friend through the MG club. They're always right. I'm yeah. mm. They're always mm. right. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Um, it started a business. Uh, he was he was trained in Rolls Royce restorations and things at McDermott. So I went to help him for a few weeks and uh, ended up being there 13, 13 years, years later nearly. <laughs> so and this business, just to touch on that, so um, Simon that runs it, you know, we both know Simon's a good good friend of his, and he. Um, yeah, he, he did a lot of training on Rolls Royce yeah. through McDermott, like you said. And then there's just such a market for people to work on those cars and do mm. really specialist machining. Oh, and so specialist. They all need bespoke work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Simon, Simon was, was fantastic at what he did. He's, or he still mm. is, I shouldn't say was. He is still <laughs> fantastic. And, yeah, Hi, Simon. Amazing. Yeah, no, Simon, amazing <laughs> detail. And, uh, 
and, and I really enjoyed working there, having the opportunity to, to work on some of those cars. We mm. sort of specialised in Rolls Royces. I remember and walking and... in there, like I'd, I'd go around there from work at lunchtime. You know, we'd walk in and roll would oh, get a head, have a biscuit, have a cup of tea. And <laughs> what do you got in today? And you'd wander around and yes. just so nonchalantly, you know, oh, there's a blower Bentley <laughs> and just this hyper, hyper rare stuff. Absolutely. And you're just walking around with your cup of tea, going, oh, yeah, yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> G'day, and what are we making? It wasn't oh, a just... coffee place, that place. <laughs> no, was no, no. I was never offered a coffee. Oh, yet. really? Never. It was a tea oh, place. Wow. It, was, it was always tea. But they'd be <laughs> machining. <laughs> There's a lathe room there, you know, like a machining yes. room. And they would make, oh, we're just making a windscreen surround for yeah. this Alvis because <laughs> you can't buy them anywhere. So we've looked at the book and the drawing, and we're just making that. Yeah, it's mm. like, oh, okay. that, that was the beauty of, I guess, of those, those vintage cars going back to that era. They were all handmade. Yeah. So. So you There's can make them again. Stopping you, and, yeah. and we had a great. But what you need is the hands that can do it. Yeah, mm, and that yeah, was probably yeah. getting a little bit hard in the end too. Was, yes. was finding people mm. to do specialist work. That's and, right. Um, but testament that, to that is that a handful of the cars that have gone through that workshop have won Motor Classica. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Simon certainly, yeah, mm. led all the restorations on those, yeah. and uh, yeah did some fantastic and still is doing some fantastic mm. work so i really enjoyed doing i've done a few jobs for them over the years and i really enjoy the the intricacies of how how we do it we don't it doesn't want has it can't look new they don't want it <laughs> yeah, to look new yeah they yeah. don't want it to look as old and you know some of these cars are 100 years old you know they don't want to look 100 no, years old it's got to be it's got to look you know yeah. somewhere in the middle yeah. so there was a lot of there's a lot of hand rubbing of colour going yeah. on and, you know, yeah, blending and It's yeah. really and artistic it work. Is. It, it is. It really is. And it's very challenging, but very rewarding. At the yeah, end of the it day. is. And personally, it is. And, and in that environment, we, we were given lots of time to do stuff right. Mm. And if you didn't do something right, you did it again, again. And, mm. and made it right. Yep. Um, but I guess... Which that, in itself is, is a rare, it's rare pretty, thing these yeah, days, you know. Yeah. As long as you your... can invoice for it, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah but, I didn't get to see the bills, so that mm, was... All um, the major manufacturers put out manuals of time manuals, don't they, of yes. how long each job, yeah, how much you were allocated well, for that job. At Saab, we had a, a recall on heater boxes on 9.3s, which was dash out, and, and all the technicians, we'd line them up and, and race and see how quick we could do them. And, <laughs> you know, I think book time was 13 hours or something, and, wow. and we'd get it down to four. And, wow. Oh, yeah, that's that obviously good. make a lot of money for the dealership. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, that became a thing. But um, yeah, no, the, the, yeah, the luxury of having the time to actually do the work and, and, as you say, do it to the standard that you want it to be done to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah without having the time constraints. I, I guess the other part of that is when you are entering cars and things in Motor Classica and those sort of events where you get judged, everyone does look for faults and That's find right. faults on your work. And it can really. Uh, it can get a bit demoralising when you've spent three years doing something and you think it's beautiful, and someone will come in and criticise mm. that the, you know, the nickel plating is too shiny. Or, oh, you know, it should be yellow. Or, Sorry, or, or, that's the wrong era. And and uh, I think having been through that, it's nice when you look at cars now just to appreciate them for what they are. That's mm. right. Um, you never know what sort of time or budget constraints people have been under t to do yeah. their work, and yeah. and if it's their car and that's how they love it. Yep. You know, Great. enjoy it. That's, exactly. that's fantastic. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I think that whole concept of, of judging and nitpicking, you know, well, it was nice to do in a way. It was also very hard that people had come up and, and criticise everything you did constantly. Yeah. 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 So, Hawkeyes yeah. Hawkeyes looking at it. Yeah, and, and that's their job. They're looking for faults. Yes, um, yeah. So, yeah. But anyway, everyone's, everyone's opinion's different. Yeah. Um, and you've got well, you've been a judge, it. David. You know, I have. Motor I have. Classica, and yes, that's, that's not an easy it's, task. It's certainly not an easy task, too. Mm. You'd think it would be, but yes. given given what you were presented, <laughs> not not an it's easy. It's never time. easy, and and everyone's opinion on what it should be is different. So. That's right. That's and right. And often that gets lost through time. Oh, you know, amazingly, like, yeah. like people just don't know anymore or yep. they think they know but it's like hang on you weren't there that's yep, right when it was built you, yep. you weren't on the factory floor you don't know and i love those stories where you know there's forums and things where people will be adamant that <laughs> they never came with this da, 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 and then someone will pipe up and go well i actually worked there, there yeah, yeah, and right. we would just grab whatever it's like mercedes-benz that someone was going on the other i read something about um the tool roll bags and the tool roll bags you know they should be a certain color and da 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 and someone piped up and said, I actually work there. And they would just grab whatever was left over from the seats. So if you had red seats, green seats, black seats, mm. that's what that's made what the tool got. roll bags. So the tool roll bags didn't match the interior of the car. They were just whatever what was, was off-cut like, in the production uh, line. Yeah. And you're like, well, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. Why wouldn't they do that? And and it just sort of shut everyone down who was going, oh, it's just not right. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. It's like, mm. no, that's yeah, right. They were just <laughs> made with what was there that's in the right. day. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I think with judging at those sort of events, I think that really 
significant and or tricky thing to do is compare originality to a restored car. Yes, mm. and and where that rates is, or, or is placed in the in the market. In the mix, yeah. 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 And yeah. that's got, and, that's and, gotta be, it's got to be determined at the start. That's right. You know? There should be two categories it's, because cars only original once, and anyone mm. can re- restore a car. That's right. Um, if you've got a big enough yeah, bank balance, check, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah. everything can be redone if you can find bespoke people such as yeah, to do any, what they do at Daily do. Works. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, to me, originality or a, 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 I, I don't mind a bit of patina, you know, that shows mm. the car hasn't been resprayed or it hasn't, you know, the seat hasn't been fully reupholstered to a brand yeah. new material. Yeah, it nice doesn't have. feel like what it was. Mm. Um, yeah, it's nice to have the original, but yep. it's a different category, I suppose. That's right. Yeah. Now, where do we go back to your cars, Ron? Where are we going Sorry. from here? There was so the Alpha One Five Six is the Saab yeah. Nine Thousand. There yeah. was a A Four wagon. There for a while. was. That you was, loved that car. Yeah, that was a trade in at Volvo. It was a <laughs> little high kilometre A Four. It was bright green. Wagon. Yeah, um, green, yeah. like a green bottle green bottle metallic green. One Point Eight manual Bridge racing green. Yeah, I remember was. Michelle was in uh, Monaco at the time when I bought it, and I rang. I said, oh, "I've bought your an Audi." And uh, she was walking past the casino, and I think there was all the big oh. flash outies out the front. She's like, oh, wow. wow. <laughs> Roll, I've hit the jackpot with this guy. <laughs> then she got home to a 200,000k <laughs> 1.8 manual wagon. So That's quite, quite a week, flash, isn't it? I was in Monaco, and my husband brought me an Audi. <laughs> yeah, it's quite, uh, right. as you do. She didn't know it was a cheap trade-in for work. So. <laughs> Back to Ringwood. It's done 220,000k. You've got to wind your own windows. <laughs> So, oh, that's um, funny. Yeah, so that so that was good, but yeah, that was probably just yeah, normal normal sort of yeah, cars. Yeah, no, normal so, day to day cars. Yeah. There's a few other interesting cars though. So you mentioned the MGA that was your dad's that you've still got. Yeah, well, my, my dad ended up buying a lot of stuff, which uh, he passed away 12 years ago, I think now. And that stuff um, has kind of all yeah, gone your way. We've had a little bit of a clean out. So we had mm. uh, yeah, TR3A Triumph there in, mm. in a million bits, which yep. we sold. Um yeah, the Renault got sold sort of at that time, which had been sitting around. But yeah, he had an MGA um, and a Tirana, LC Tirana that he'd had when he bought new in 1969. So just so, an LC Tirana? Oh, so. no. <laughs> <laughs> he bought an LC GTR Tirana from Gary and Warren Smith on the 12th of GWS? December. GWS? <laughs> yep, wow. in Oakley. Just um, before Christmas, a little bit of a Christmas yeah, a present. Christmas yeah. present. So okay. I think at the time... Um, yeah, he'd moved to sale. I had a job in sale, living in Melbourne, so I wanted a car to go to sale and back. So I bought the bought the Tirana. Wow. So um, that's cool. yeah. that's an iconic car. It is. Yeah, so that um, car. yeah, that I my memories of that that just sat in the shed in bits forever. He pulled it apart, I think, in nineteen seventy eight. He had a little little accident in it. Just so wasn't the that old, so that, what's it nine years it's old? Nine years old. It's yeah. not yeah. old. No, no, yeah. it wasn't an old car. But um, yeah pulled it apart and that's my memory of it probably growing up was just a sort of old sitting in the corner of the shed. shell in, yeah. in a million bits and uh yeah we've been lucky enough to just yeah finish that car and uh yeah drove Put it, it back for the first together. time Wonderful. a couple of months ago and which was yeah, very it's exciting. pretty good so yeah had, the paintwork was done quite a few years ago and uh yeah like, like yeah, keeping it with patina we've tried yep. to keep as much original like I know As the upholstery can. and the stitching and yeah. stuff was you, like let's keep the door cards, keep the seats. Yeah, so they're yeah. not perfect, but it's it's what it had. Yeah, um, but if they've been were only used for nine years and been in a shed, you know they haven't been sitting out in the paddock. They yeah, no, no. they yeah. haven't had four hundred thousand k's worth of people sitting on them, so yeah. they're probably fine. They're not too yeah. bad. So yeah, yeah, yeah so that's fine. really good. It's all all back together. And the guy and that the guy that kind of pieced it together in the end like you did a hell of a lot of work but then finally said all right yeah i was, let, I was done with let's it. get someone just <laughs> to just need someone to finish it the, and, and that's the hard bit you know mm. like i've i've done it before you yeah, i've had cars painted and pulled stuff off but it's it's all that putting the window felt back in I, and putting the door locks back right. inside yeah. the door and it's fiddly stuff I, I think part of that too was with coming from you know so long at the derby works where everything had to be perfect i just got caught up on things and mm. i couldn't you couldn't just get couldn't, it I couldn't done. just do yeah, it done. Right. And uh, yeah, there's a great saying that got told to me and it was on a poster. It said progress before perfection, which is really important. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you've just got to move just on. Just keep and doing it. It doesn't matter if it's not spot And you can on. come back and do yeah. it later if you're not yep. happy, yep. but just, just keep it moving. Keep it rolling. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, that's been fantastic to have that finished. And uh, yeah, it, it looks really good. But the guy that did okay. it, I remember at the time, you know, he was interstate and we took the car there and had all that done. And, and the guy that did it said... Um, 
you know, he was arguing with you about some things like, oh, this isn't right, this is right. And you're like, no, that's what <laughs> that's, the car had. It has, you know, it's never been it's, touched. It was nine so. years old when it was sat here. That, that's how they are. Yeah. You know, so it kind of re-educated wow. him a bit. Okay. Yeah, things. he ended up sending some... But uh, the other thing info. he said was it was so nice that it hadn't been... I mean, it had been a part, but yeah. but he's like, everything's it going back have, where it, it should never be. never had floors put in. No, there was no or damage. Or, so it had little localised repairs. Yeah. But, um, yeah, he said everything just fitted together. It went together. back so easily yeah. because that's where it came from. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. it was all the original parts going yes. back on. So. Yeah. so that's cashmere white? Cashmere white, which yep. is, yeah, fairly creamy yes. white. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so, uh, yeah, my mum actually came down last week and had a sit in it. Oh, so oh yeah, because she okay. hadn't seen it since it had all been done. She hadn't seen it since it was finished. What so, were her um, thoughts? Uh, yeah, she... she she got out and said, I don't really remember it. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's been off the road. It was just one of so it's many. Just been, uh, it's been uh, off the road for so long. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Probably have more attachment to a Morris 1100 if we could find a good one of those. So. <laughs> yeah. Down, kitty. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Uh, so is it, we like to ask our guests too, is there anything that you haven't had, that uh, any mm. car you haven't had that you'd aspire yeah, to? what's on the list? Open check. Open check. Yeah, I, I've often thought about this. I I always think I'd like like a Lotus Elise or okay. an Alpha Four C, something like that, something fairly small. And mm-hmm. um, but honestly, I think the thought of them is probably better than the reality. <laughs> the, the reality. Mm. <laughs> I think I've always liked the thought of a Lotus, but every time I've okay. gone near one, you're like, oh, it's a little plastic car sort of thing, and yep. um, they don't quite live up to what you think. But um, yeah, I, I don't have. Anything I'm really not, not a hugely aspiration. For. No, I've got a few. Well, that's a good projects. way to be. <laughs> yeah, a few projects still to finish Content. in the shed. So, yeah, um, yeah Tirana's done. MGA is pretty much Almost pretty much there. done. There's a mini waiting in the wings. Yeah, see, that's okay. cool. You've talked about that. Yeah, a bit, I like the mini. mini. Um, and that's well, so. This isn't the Clubman. This is another no, one. This is another one. Yeah, oh, so okay. A mini K, which uh, oh, brilliant. Yeah, came from from. Yeah, extended family so excellent um and the and k then, is the last round nose mini they did here yeah Kanga- 1100 1100 no, kangaroo um little badges on the on the yeah, side stickers on the, on the yeah, front it was counts. kind of that last hurrah before the, the square front yeah, club, the club man, so mm. yep. so flush uh, door handles and those oh, mine, of mine's an early one so it actually has the earlier oh handles, wow so okay. they did change mid yeah. right yeah. okay so okay. um but again like we said with those eras everything just Whatever they had. And is that a white like, car? Or? No, it's uh, Camino Gold. I was going to say, or Camino Gold. Uh, Camino Gold. <laughs> Why were you going to say Camino Gold? Because it was a very popular colour back I like in the, the day. Camino and Gold. it was on Bs and yeah, I think yeah, yeah, Rovers, yeah, Range yeah, Rovers yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah. So um, so it's a, a mustardy beige, basically. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah. yeah, it looks good yeah. when it's shiny. Very. So yeah, with, the right, with the right wheels. Yeah, right wheels and black. Yeah, it'll come up nice, so. Lovely. I think um, that I'd love. You know, we've talked about it. I'd love to see you tip money into that car because that's yeah, that, might be the next one. I think you'd enjoy that more than the Tirana or the MGA to drive. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see what happens. Mm. So, excellent. Mm. Time right. for a mini. We'll watch that space. Well, thank you very much, Rowan. That has <laughs> been, been a, a colourful history. It's gone very quick, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I know. We told you it would go quickly. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. And I'm going to line bed tonight, just dreaming about. The cat in the radio. <laughs> in the fan. The that's that's my fan. lasting memory. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's all right. I'll, I'll, I'll go to bed dreaming about a cashmere white, one family owned GTR. Yeah, you're probably more in line with most of the population. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we like variety. <laughs> with red wall tyres. Exactly. And Absolutely. The black interior. Absolutely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> On that note, thank you, all Rowan. Right. Thank you, David. Thanks, David. Thanks, As Ed. we always we say, say, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Good night. Thanks, good Rowan. Night. Thank you.